Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad. I feel so energized. Praise God. Because these things we're talking about, they are... Whew. Now, listen. If you were part of the prayer meeting yesterday, the heavens are opened over you. You are going to walk these months ah, like a king, I'm telling you. Like a king who's got servants working for him. So you're going to be receiving reports of good news, reports of progress this month. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your portion. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! Now let's see how far we can go. You, you know, we've just been in chapter 2. <laughs> Praise God this whole week. Because there's a lot. I don't want to just read and read. I want to get, you know, see, the word of God is like a package. You know, when you open it, make sure you sap everything you can sap from it. Because guess what? When you come tomorrow, it's stuck up again. Praise God. So receive everything that you can find, you can find in it today. All right, so 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And we, we stopped in verse 13 yesterday. It says, Which things also we speak. What things? I've got to go back to verse 12. So you follow again. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Who gives us these things freely? God gives us these things freely. Which things... Which things? So the free things that God has given to us, these things, we speak about them. Mm. All right. Not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. Pause for a moment. I want money. What's man's wisdom going to say to me? Go work. Go get a job. If you don't get a job, if you don't do some work, you can get money. Okay? See, that's what man's wisdom is going to tell you. So you wake up in the morning. <clears throat> and then say, no, I've got to meet some financial responsibilities today. So what do I do? And then naturally you want to start thinking, go get a job, go look for work, go double your efforts. That's what man's wisdom is going to say to you. But he's telling you there. We are speaking this thing not in the words which man's wisdom teaches. So the moment I said, okay, so what, 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 what more job can I do to get to make up this money? What more deal can I strike to make up this money? Yeah? Why are you thinking of that? Say, hold on. Hold on. No, I don't think that's how God's going to give me this. <laughs> Is God against us walking? No, he's not. But I want you to understand his mind concerning you. God did not create you to be a slave. No, he didn't. When you walk, he wants you to walk as a king. He wants you to walk as a person of responsibility, not because of the money. Now, it's an attitude. I'm telling you the truth. It's an attitude. It's an attitude when you're walking. The attitude you show when you're walking because of the money and the attitude you show when you're walking because you are the boss. They are different. See, you may be an employee, but you still work as the boss. Ah, now, now I want you to, I want you to just imagine. You know, several of us, you know, when we were in school, did, you know, some IT um, or work experience somewhere. You know, in engineering, you, you call it Cyrus. So you, you go to an engineering firm and then you serve them for six months and then the first one is for three, two, two or three months and the second one is for six months. And then you, you do some work there. Now, you don't do the work. Now, there are people who use the opportunity to make some money. So they, they, they look for a lucrative organization that at least will give them something. Now, there are some people who are just there to learn. Money is not their problem because maybe their parents are, are well to do, so they give them enough money. So they go, they go to that organization, you know, as you know, some somebody. <laughs> you understand what I'm talking about? Now their attitude will be different. One is like, ah, I better do my work so that see, it looks good, 
But he said, what about doing the work as though I own it? You get what I'm saying? I'm working for someone, but I work as though it's my business, as though it's my job. So I make sure things are done right. I make sure I'm there on time. I make sure I do the things I've got to do. It's my business. It's my lifestyle. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, that's how God wants you to work. Why? Okay, someone comes in. If you don't do this work very well, now I'll fire you. And let me see. Oh, you know, you see, you see, when you worked with God so much, a statement like that will just put you off. You will what? Yeah. So, so you are not thinking work is the way. You are not thinking a new deal is the way. What are you thinking? Say, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. Remember, your blessing is spiritual. Are you following me? Remember what he said in verse 12. He said, now we have received the things that the Spirit of God has given us. He has revealed to us the things that God has given to us freely. Now he said, we are speaking these things, but not in the words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Ghost teaches. So I'm going to compare my spiritual blessing to another person's spiritual blessing. So what do I do when I say, I'm blessed? Who has God blessed? Who am I saying is blessing me? God has blessed me. Okay, so who has God blessed before that I know of? And then we'll look at Abraham. Yes, Abraham, we can confirm that God blessed him. Imagine God say, leave your father's house to a new place altogether. And he became great in that new place. You look at um, Jacob. You look at Isaac's life. Now, these are testimonies of people who God have blessed. Now, I want to now look closely at their lives to see how God blessed them. So I look at Abraham. He, he, there was farming in the land. God told him where to go. And then he went there and he came out rich. Which work did he do? Did he go serve the, the king of Egypt? Did he go? No, he didn't. He went to Abimelech's place. Another time. Excuse me. Another time. And, and the same result. See? So like, what's going on in this man's life? It's as if there's something upon him that anything he does, it just... So I see God leading him to what to do. And I see God responding to him. The same thing with Isaac. Oh, there was famine in the land. Everybody's going down to Egypt. God took a different route with him. Say, God said, don't go. Stay here. And God said, sow. So he sowed because the Lord commanded him to sow. That's plants. He planted. And then God said, in the same year, he received a hundredfold harvest. I thought the ground was barren. That's why people were leaving. It became barren so that the right person would plant. Listen, listen. God can set confusion in a place so everybody will leave and then you will take over. So when, when suddenly something happens and everybody's walking away, be careful to ask the mind of God before taking that decision, like every other person. Don't just join. Ah, well, what do I do? You know, a rumor can just come into an organization. Maybe you work in an organization and say, ah, they are retrenching people. Who, is it not better we resign before they sack us? They say, it's true. And then someone will say, ah, it's like I saw your name. Eh, you saw my name? And quickly, you just go and put to your resignation and say, let it not be a fire. Let it be I resign so that when I go elsewhere, I will say I, I'm the one that left them. Before you take any rash decision like that, go ask the mind of God. Just like David, the Bible said, David always inquired of the Lord. Lord, what's your wisdom concerning what's going on in my organization? And the Lord will speak to you. He will tell you, look, it's for your good. Stay. Praise God. Or the Lord will tell you, leave next month. Whatever the Lord tells you to do is where your blessing is. Now, when the Lord tells you, leave, don't start calculating. Hey, but Lord, can you give me three more months so that I'll save up a lot of money? If the Lord tells you leave today and you don't have a dime on you, brother, sister, leave. The one who's telling you to leave has already sent his angel ahead of you. Ah, that's what you should understand. He has sent his angel ahead of you. If you don't leave, the angel is right there in front. He doesn't find you. But when you leave, you see the provision that the angel has set before you. Didn't he say he has prepared a table before you? All right, 
So that's how I compare my blessing. I look at those whom I can't say. Not, not people who, who've done stuff and then they come and say, it's God though. If it's not God, how would I have made it? He said, but how did you really make it? See, don't bother about those details. Just know that God has blessed me. There's a big problem there. And Abraham, the detail of Abraham's blessing was given to us. Praise God. So also the detail of your blessing should be available for, because it becomes a testimony for you. There is no testimony without details. God just did it. So what did God do? You know, don't bother about those details. God just did it. You're not sharing a testimony. Believe me, you're not. A testimony tells how I put my faith to work, how the word of the Lord came to me and I held on to it. It even tells the period I doubted and how I came out of that doubt. And then I saw the manifestation of God's word and I can tell you how God did it. That's what is a, what the testimony is. Praise God. That's why you know you know in churches these days you say share your testimony and they put the microphone here. Just just go straight to the point. Straight to the point. Don't tell us stories. It is in the stories that the testimony is. Praise God. So that's not testimony. That's just coming to show up to say God has blessed me. Oh praise God. Oh, and everybody say Amen. 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 It is in the stories, the long story I'm telling you that the testimony is. <laughs> So you see how far away even the church is going away from God's truth. And then nobody gets blessed. They say, ah, see that sister. Ah, she just got a brand new cow. Hey, God, you must do it. How is God going to do it? You don't even know the details of our own. But in, in the story, people are edified. People learn. People, you know, someone else was in that down situation with the, at that person. They said, oh! I've gotten what to do now. I know what to do now. And then the person goes and he comes out of his own situation. That's how testimony works out the blessing of God. Praise God. Oh, let's, let, let's just finish. Verse 14 says, But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Now he just puts a demarcation there. There are people who cannot. Look at the natural man receiveth not. He doesn't receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he ability. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually the same. Who is the natural man? This is one who has no connection with God at all. Now there are people like that on the earth. They have, when I mean they have no connection, I mean right from Adam, they have no connection with God. See, they are like that. That's why it says, they cannot see. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit. You know, I dare tell you this, the, natural, the, the, the one he refers to as the natural man here cannot even get saved. See, because for you to get saved, you have to first of all be open to the things of the Spirit of God. But then he says, he cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. For they are foolishness. Neither can he know. So he cannot know. Now if he cannot know them, how does he get saved? There are people who will never get saved because they don't have the ability to get saved. See, that's another day stuff. But just take this home. Because in several other messages, you hear me drop some things like this. And when you add them together, you understand what I'm saying. They don't get blessed at all. See? So, but he that is spiritual judges all things. See, he looks into all things. Let me read this from the Amplified Version. <clears throat> Thank you, Lord Jesus. It's about he that is spiritual judged all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who had known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. Now, um, oh, I wanted to read this from the Amplified Version, but we are out of time. Praise God. May God bless you today. May God open your understanding and receive that which he has given you. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Bye-bye.